Hello, this is Jim Lofton, the Director of Technical Services and Sales for Milk Specialties Global. And today we'd like to continue our discussions on palmitic and stearic acid, and in particular how they affect milk fatty acid synthesis and production in the lactating cow. The recent interest in feeding highly concentrated palmitic acid lactating dairy cows for the purpose of improving milk fat tests and yield has caused researchers and consultants alike to search for information to aid in making informed decisions on long-chain fatty acid supplementation. Researchers have fed or infused highly purified palmitic acid and stearic acid to determine their effects on milk production and milk fatty acid content. The landmark studies of Steele, Moore, and Noble were the first to look at the effects of feeding purified sources of palmitic and stearic acid on milk yield and milk components. And in their first study, they observed that the feeding of 578 grams per day of highly purified palmitic acid and 564 grams a day of stearic acid increased milk fat percentage by 0.86 and by 0.30 units, respectively. Feeding palmitic acid increased milk fat percentage and the yield of palmitic acid and milk fat, but concentration and yield of the small to medium chain C4 to C14 fatty acids along with palmitic, or excuse me, along with stearic and oleic acids and milk fat decreased. Noble observed that similar shifts in milk fatty acid proportions when they fed 448 grams per day of either C16 or C18 palmitic and stearic acids. Enzobert abomasely infused 490 grams a day of either palmitic or stearic acid in lactating dairy cows and observed elevated milk fat percents and similar shifts in milk fat fatty acid proportions. High levels of either fed or infused palmitic acid increases the proportion of palmitic acid in milk fat but reduces that of the you know, with the C18 fatty acids, whether it's stearic, oleic, linoleic, or linolenic. When high levels of stearic acid were fed, C18 fatty acid proportions increased, whereas that of palmitic acid proportions were depressed. From these published trials, it can be concluded that feeding or abomasally infusing high levels of either palmitic or stearic acid interferes with the other's proportions in yield in milk fat. High levels of purified palmitic and stearic acid inhibit de novo synthesis of milk fatty acids and reduce the proportions and yield of small and mid-chain mid fatty acids as well. So again, it's probably not a good idea to load your cannon with either high levels of palmitic or high levels of stearic acid for the sake of improving milk fat percentage. Among all the different studies here that we show on Steel and Moore and Noble and Engelbert, again, the point is, is that C16 and C18 carbons are affected greatly when you either load up either stearic or, or palmitic acid in the diet. Now, recently, several short-term lactation studies investigated the use of highly purified palmitic acid mostly containing 80% greater palmitic acid have been published. These studies have varied results, and we'll show those here in Table 2. Please note the short duration of the experimental trial periods. As you can see here, the Mosley study done in 2007 had a great increase in dry matter intake, which has not been able to be explained and has not been observed in any other study that had been published. Fatty acid additions to diets do not result in increases in dry matter intake. Again, they were feeding about 0 0.91 pounds of, of uh, total palmitic acid. They did receive an, um, uh, a significant improvement in milk yield and also in milk fat percent. And again, the study length in days was 16 days, very short term. Now, Warnches in California uh, did a study on a large dairy, uh, and their response was on a 35-day study was a significant reduction in fat tests. The control experienced a 3.75% fat test and it depressed down to 3.6 by the addition of 0.85 pounds a day of palmitic acid. Uh, Rico and Harvatine and two studies using low and high cows both observed significant reductions in dry matter intake. They also did not see any change in milk yield, nor did they see changes in milk fat percentage. Again, study lengths here is 14 days. 
Uh, RICO and LOCK in 2012, again, showed a non-significant uh, uh, increase in fat test. However, 14-day trial again. Uh, LOCK again on uh, 2013 showed a significant reduction in dry matter intake. They did get a significant increase in milk fat percentage. Uh, they did show a significant reduction in milk protein content. That was the first time that's been seen. So again, we're seeing uh, that again in the Pantone trial, the last one here on the in the table, significant increase in milk yield and a significant increase in milk fat test with no change in dry matter intake. Small decline in milk fat pro or milk protein content that was not significant. Again, on a 21-day trial. So here again, you're looking at uh, all these different studies that showed study lengths of very short duration. Uh, we're seeing a, some uh, research that has been done here uh, resulted in significant reduction in dry matter intake. Some studies increased milk fat, some depressed, uh, some showed increases in milk yield, some did not. Some you know, significantly depressed milk proteins, you know, a whole bunch didn't. So again, what, what we're looking at here on these short-term trials is that the results are extremely variable. Again, three studies observed significant depressed and dry matter intake, while one showed a significant increase. Two studies observed significant increase in milk yield, while the remaining five did not. Three studies observed significant increase in milk fat percentage. Three observed no significant difference, while one trial showed a significant decrease. The concern about the inconsistent results may be due to the short duration of these trials. The longest trial of Warches was observed the significant decrease in milk fat utilized 35-day periods while the six remaining trials ranged from 14 to 25 days. These studies showed an average transfer efficiency of palmitic acid from added supplementation to the milk fat of about 16%. So now what that means is that of the 200, 400, 600, however much palmitic acid was added to the diet, only 16% of that found its way to increase milk fat production. So, of course, the question comes up is, where did the rest of it go? And again, we discussed that in our previous video training uh, module on uh, the metabolism utilization, where the great, some of this palmitic acid excess ends up in adipose tissue. However, the, the, the largest chunk, we believe, ends up in the liver, where it has to be metabolized and goes through beta oxidation, which is probably the reason for the reduction in dry matter intake. Another study reported at the ADSA in 2013 annual meetings compared feeding a highly concentrated palmitic acid supplement greater than 80 percent and megalac, a calcium salt of palm fatty acid distillate. The results are illustrated in Figure 1. These results show a decline in fat corrected milk production over time when megalac was compared to palmitic 80. And again, in that, again, the excess Palmitic acid, again, is, uh, loses its zip, it appears, at about four to six weeks. The cow's inability to force more palmitic acid into milk fat due to its high melting point combined with the excess hepatic oxidation of palmitic acid that may lead to the reduced milk yield and the lower fat corrected milk production. And here you can see that study. And if you look at that, the, again, the red is the megalac, the blue color is the palmitic 80, again, an 85% palmitic acid product. And you can see that the lines held pretty closely together when we looked at uh, out through about the week four to five. And then the palmitic 80 tends to decrease rapidly after that. So it appears that it's, it loses its pizzazz as time goes on, probably due to its uh, issues with depressing intake and the uh, hepatic oxidation of palmitic acid. In other studies, they were using the Energy Booster 100, either infused in the case of Drakely or fed in the case of Relling and Reynolds. We noticed that there was no significant change in milk fatty acid content of milk fat. We also noted in these trials that there was significant improvements in fat test over the control as well as increases in milk production. But the key was is that adding a combined amount of palmitic and steer and some oleic acid 
resulted in no change in milk fatty acid content, but did improve milk fat percentage. Again, these studies were 15 years apart, and the research either fed or infused EB100 to the high-producing lactating cows. And again, in both published studies, milk yield and milk fat tests were increased over the control. However, milk fatty acid proportions were not significantly changed when a one-to-one -one combination of both C16O and C18O were fed. It could be concluded from the research trials that loading a long-chain fatty acid supplement with either high palmitic or high stearic fatty acids will reduce de novo synthesis and the formation of small and medium chain fatty acids, palmitic more so than steric, however. Feeding high palmitic levels in the diet will also depress the C18-0 and C18-1, which is steric and oleic acid content and yield in milk fat. Feeding high steric acid levels in the diet will also depress the palmitic acid content uh, and yield in milk fat as well. So again, showing that you know, loading the can with either one of these uh, at high levels, uh, not in combination, uh, does change significantly the milk fatty acid composition. Again, feeding the blend shows no effect on milk fatty acid content or the yield in milk fat. Recent research trials have shown that feeding high levels of palmitic acid may reduce dry matter intake as observed in 50% of these trials. Feeding a blend of palmitic and steric plus oleic does not reduce dry matter intake as shown in numerous trials. High palmitic acid has shown varied results in short-term trials in improving milk fat percentage and milk yield. Feeding high palmitic acid appears to affect milk fat percent on a short-term basis and longer-term trials show the milk fat percentage returns to pre-trial levels after four to six weeks.